Hello, and welcome to Your Schools. I'm Dr. Christine Mahoney, Superintendent of the East Granby Public Schools. And today, I am joined by two of my colleagues, Mrs. Karen Gogel, who is our Director of Student Services, and she is joined by a member of our faculty, Ms. Gina Pombach. Today we will be talking with you about an important component of the East Granby Public Schools, the services that we provide to our students from preschool all the way through grade 12, the services that help our students to grow and to excel. I want to begin by asking Mrs. Gogel, Karen, welcome to our program. Thank you. I want to ask you to just tell us a little bit about student services and what kinds of services you provide and um, how you're structured to provide those services. Okay. Well, uh, student services works in a very close partnership with general ed teachers, with parents, and the community. And our goal is really to support students by providing them very specialized instruction. So to that end, our department is comprised of um, highly skilled teachers in the area of special education, um, with focus also on uh, reading disabilities. We also have student um, staff that are um, in the area of occupational and physical therapy, um, psychological services, we have occupational and physical therapy, we have an extensive guidance department that's now comprised of our guidance counselors, a career counselor, as well as a social worker. Um, in our department, we also have um, staff that specialize in working with students with English language learning um, identifications and also our um, department works with um, students that fall under the gifted and talented. That's awesome. So you pretty much uh, have something for any student that falls anywhere within that gamut. Correct. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I noticed that uh, you have with you uh, Gina Pombeck and uh, I've seen Gina around and uh, mm -hmm. have had the fortune of uh, being in that room uh, where Gina is and uh, working with the staff and with our youngest learners and uh, seeing some of the wonderful experiences uh, that they're having there. So today I'm going to ask you, Gina, to just tell me a little bit more about uh, East Granby's Early Childhood Services, uh, the impact of uh, early intervention on student growth, and what it really means for the student in terms of their future success. So tell us about what you do with our youngest learners. Well, thank you so much for including me in this conversation because um, I am very passionate about the young child and, um, and the opportunities that we have to impact their learning and their lives mm -hmm. um, when we invest in them. So in the town of East Granby, we have preschool programs for three-year-olds and four-year-olds. And our model in the town is to educate children with disabilities, identified learning disabilities um, or developmental delays alongside normally developing peers. Um, from experience and from the vast research base, we know that this is a best practice, that children, um, when educated beside their peers, learn exponentially faster. Um, the other real critical part of our program is that we strive to create an environment that is language rich. And the reason that this is so critical for the young child um, is that um, brain research tells us that this stage of development is, um, is very important for language learning. That during this stage of birth to six years, the brain is very plastic mm -hmm. and very moldable. And the more we use that part of the brain during those years, the greater the outcomes for language learners. So that's the first most important part of our programs. Um, the other thing that we really look to do is to um, provide foundations for the children to be, um, to be 
primed and ready for the kindergarten classroom and the experiences that they will have. Primarily, they're reading, they're learning to read. And so we look carefully at the, what the research says about that. We know that oral language is the, is the greatest predictor for reading success, and that's why we focus on a language-rich environment. But the research tells us more about um, what children need to be ready to learn to read and what, um, what factors greatly impact their reading success. And so we, we look at not just their oral language, but their exposure to print because that is a high predictor. And we look at their exposure to books. And I'd love to just share with you one study that has impacted not just our classrooms, but I think our families. It's, sure. it's a piece of research that we share with our parents, um, with our coworkers, and anyone that we find, daycare workers in the community, anyone that we find that we can possibly tell this to, mm -hmm. we share with. And this is a, a study that was done quite a while back by Anderson, Wilson, and Fielding. And it's been reduplicated with many different control groups and many kinds of settings. But basically what the study did was to look at a child's exposure to books, the number of minutes that they're exposed to in a given day, the impact on their oral language, their exposure to words and vocabulary, and then the correlation to their later reading success. Hmm. And so, for instance, a child that is exposed to books for two minutes a day in a given year would be exposed to 106,000 words in a year and they would be likely to achieve reading success at a 20th percentile. A child who is exposed to books for four and a half minutes a day would more than double their vocabulary in a year. They would be exposed to 282,000 words in a year, and they would be likely to achieve in the 50th percentile. And a child who is exposed to books for 20 minutes a day um, their oral language and vocabulary capacity is exponentially extended to over two million words in a year. And their reading success is likely to be in the 90th percentile. So what this tells us is that we have great opportunity Absolutely. for the young child. Absolutely. It tells us that combined with the brain research that tells us that this is the, the critical time for learning language, that if we invest there, and provide um, rich literature in those years that we have really impacted these children as language learners and as readers in the future. So we know that this is a critical time. It's an exciting time for our youngest of learners and it's wonderful to be in an environment where we can invest that way in our children as learners, in our learning communities and society as a whole. That's, that's great. And actually, there are follow-up studies that um, were conducted subsequent to that. I, I mm -hmm. can recall uh, reading one study that was um, uh, supported by uh, the OECD, mm -hmm. and they were looking at student performance on the PISA um, exams, and okay. those are the mm -hmm. tests that are administered internationally and the results are used to compare countries right. and you've heard you know the United States has lost its place in terms of being in the top 10 and and it just seems there are consistently are a, a set of countries that seem to be in the top 10 you know talking about Finland and Sweden right. and, and um, some other countries that have climbed up, um, China, Hong Kong uh, in particular, and uh, some other countries. And what they have found in those studies is that what we see with young children in terms of the plasticity of the brain and the acquisition of language and vocabulary, that kind of learning continues. And the students who do well and do best on the PISA exams, there's a direct correlation and a strong correlation between those students' exposure to books, print mm -hmm. materials in the yes. home. Right. So just like you are currently emphasizing uh, with parents to you know get print material in the home, obviously right. developmentally appropriate uh, for the students to read and practice, uh, the study and the results continue 
to be consistent uh, in showing that students who encounter on a regular basis, routinely, uh, exposure to print materials actually do exceedingly better right. than their peers who do not have that same practice in the home. So thanks for bringing that to light and for sharing that with everyone, you know. Um, tell me a little bit um, about what you have noticed in terms of how our students progress through the early childhood component of the services um, that we provide. Well, um, children um, most often transition from birth to three services into the preschool at age three. Mm -hmm. And um, they are provided a variety of different services depending on their learning needs. Uh, we often look at the population of the classroom to provide them with peer models that are suitable for their learning needs. Mm -hmm. We um, provide environments for both the um, normally developing peer and the children with disabilities to learn at their level, to, um, to excel where they have strengths and to grow where they have weaknesses. And so we build communities within the classroom um, that support all, all the learners that are there and um, foster communities of um, partnerships in learning that, um, that really establish a community of learning. It's wonderful in that we, as a team in our special services department, are able to co-teach many of the, the activities in the classroom. So we have speech and language clinician that we co-teach with. Um, we have an occupational therapist that might be in the classroom for specific kinds of activities. Um, we have behavior analysts that come in and, mm -hmm. and help to help us shape social skills and behaviors. And I think that it creates an environment in which adults are learning alongside of children and that's very exciting for children to see that, that learning is a lifelong experience, that we're all learning according to our strengths and weaknesses, and that we can all support each other in that. And it's just, it's just a wonderful community um, of learners. Awesome. Our professional learning culture mm -hmm. in our district starts at the very lowest level Absolutely, and continues all the way through. Mm -hmm. Sure does. Yeah. And we have found that it has made a significant difference, the early intervention piece mm -hmm. over time with the um, type and intensity of service that a student has needed, that it has really decreased over time, mm -hmm. um, given that early intervention. Right. And for some children, um, actually close gaps yeah. before yeah. entering kindergarten. So the earlier the intervention, the more powerful the impact. Absolutely. And in the long run, much better for the student. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. great. It's so also can you tell me, Karen, a little bit about your department's connection to the East Granby community? Because I know that there are others who, with whom you have uh, consulted and who are now reaching out and, and are trying to implement some of your practices. So tell us a little bit about that piece. So we have um, very close working relationships with the um, three other larger preschools that are in our district boundaries. And so um, oftentimes we'll receive um, a, a phone call um, asking for some input where um, Gina and her team, depending upon the need, will, will go out and, and consult and provide input. Um, whether it's, it's strategies for classroom teacher or structure of the environment or some input for parent. Mm -hmm. So we work very closely um, with the preschools because we also know that um, there are East Granby residents that are going to be entering our kindergarten program. Mm -hmm. um, so we do provide that. We also, um, as a district, provide um, parent workshops. Sarah Kleiman, our parent liaison, arranges those depending upon interests. Um, that we um, take a survey at our first um, open house and um, that is open to the community as well as parents of the preschoolers that um, are attending um, within the district and neighboring districts and they've been on topics of um, reading, language development, um, love and logic on positive behavioral strategies. Um, 
and we have found the attendance rate has really increased with that. Um, we do work really closely with town services mm -hmm. for our students, for additional resources for parents, mm -hmm. um, and also we're expanding and looking at the businesses that are in the community for work experience. That's great. That's great. That's phenomenal that mm. we have the community component yeah. of this as well. Absolutely. Um, so tell me about your collaborative efforts with other districts. Mm -hmm. We have um, a Farmington Valley Directors Group that meets um, once a month that is a phenomenal group of people and we are resources to each other. And we have found that by collaborating, we have often found that we can share transportation, um, we have shared resources, um, professional development when in each of our districts we may have one or two people in that discipline area that together we can create a meaningful professional development mm -hmm. um, for those individuals like for in the speech and language area or in the occupational therapy area. Um, we've also found that um, together we collaborated and we have formulated um, really schools with um, specific mission mm -hmm. that have reduced the cost of tuition for us as individual districts. So it's, it's a wonderful, phenomenal resource for us as well as a cost savings. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great because the benefit of sharing is vast. Yes, it is. You know, and you have one community of learners learning from another and having, mm -hmm. you know, the opportunity to exchange ideas and, and talk about what is working, what isn't working, make modifications to the various models and right. ultimately right. improving the program for the benefit right. of the for children. The children. Right. So I think that's, that's wonderful that we're doing that. Um, so what initiatives are you focusing on this year, whether it's in the preschool or in any other area? Well, I, I think, you know, first I want to say that we have a very dynamic um, team mm -hmm. and um, who takes on initiatives, um, who, you know, I think as, as a group collectively, we're very current on the research and very eager um, to provide the highest quality of of um, service to students and our expectation um, is for all students to reach those high standards um, so we work very hard at that. Um, right now um, of course our, our preschool is, is always evolving and growing and I feel it's really kind of the the first gem in our, our community but as, as a, as a um, community, I think we have a lot of phenomenal initiatives that um, we've taken on. Our life skills program for our middle and high school, we've really expanded. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been a wonderful model for a mentorship program for That's some great. of our, really um, and for our community service project for students. Um, our um, We've worked very hard and our students are performing very high on um, state standards. Um, and assessments that we're very, very proud of. Um, we also, and I encourage um, parents to go on um, the um, new website that our, our guidance counselor, career counselor um, have online at the, on, at the high school. Um, there is a uh, phenomenal list of resources for parents as well as students in looking at um, post-secondary um, planning. Right. Um, as a district, um, we offer um, some um, really cutting edge programs for students as we develop um, the career planning and look at um, really post secondary outcomes that our students have opportunities to participate in work study as well as non paid experiential. Um, work placements um, to really career, expand on their career interests. We're connected with as Nuntuck and UConn for some collegial, um, you know, participation in coursework um, for students, as well as um, the fifth-year program for the manufacturing and business that mm -hmm. is really. Um, a phenomenal opportunity for students to participate in. Right. And the, the beauty of it is that any student can participate in, in those programs as well. 
because as a team, we, we almost tailor the program to meet their needs and, and also, you know, to meet their aspirations. Um, for many of our students, there is a bit of hesitancy about whether they feel that they can pursue and successfully complete. But once they realize the resources that we have to support them in their endeavors um, and, and see their peers um, taking advantage of it, I think they, they feel a lot better about what the possibilities are and that those possibilities truly are endless. And that's, you know, thanks to, to both of you and the other members of the team who sort of reinforce that thinking in them as they're coming up through the system and taking advantage of everything that you offer through student services. Um, I had the, the pleasure of looking at the website a few times mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. it was being developed and it is very comprehensive. I, I am not seeing any other one um, as comprehensive as that ours is um, and I think that it really reflects the, um, the extent to which we go to make sure that mm -hmm. any information that anyone needs about what we provide for students or just any general information about you know, our district, um, any information our students and parents might need about college planning or planning for life after high school, mm -hmm. it is all there. It is all there and it's nice to have all that information in mm -hmm. one place. Mm -hmm. So I, I also really want to share that our paraprofessionals are really an integral part of our department. And what's been really um, exciting this year is that the number of offerings of professional development that they were able to participate in, and then we collaborated and held many of them with our special ed teachers so that there was an opportunity for some really nice right. dialogue and planning for our students. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very unique situation yeah. um, for districts and, sure, and it's sure. an important one and, and it places value on professional development. Sure. And it makes complete sense because the paraprofessionals are in the classrooms working with the students and it's important that they know exactly what is being taught in the classroom so that they can be even more effective working with the students, right. whether it's one-on-one -on -one or paraprofessional with several students. I think that's an incredible model that, that includes them in the training that we're doing so they are also empowered to help the student to learn. That's wonderful. Yes. That's wonderful. This is, this is just uh, such a joy to hear about mm -hmm. our program that we have in our district that really is focused on the learner and yes. the professional learning that goes along with that for our colleagues. Um, I think, it, obviously, this has had a tremendous impact mm -hmm. on our student learning and our student per student's performance overall. So I want to thank you publicly for mm -hmm the work that you do and for everything that you do for our students and our community. Thank you very much. Well, thank thank you. you for having us. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Karen, very much for all of thank your work. You. Uh, this concludes this segment of Your Schools. I want to, again, thank uh, Mrs. Gogel and Mrs. Palmback for their incredible work uh, in the East Granby Public Schools on behalf of our students and our entire community. Thank you, and we will see you for our next segment of Your Schools.